everybody, welcome to the world's greatest Spider-Man podcast. Here comes the Spider-Cast. I'm your co-host, Mike Al, and as always, I'm joined by... Joshua Mervell, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the first Spidey comics to come out in 1987. That's right, that's right. And uh, joining us this week is Bex Luthor. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I, Hi. I'm here, yeah boy. I'm here every week. Just and con- yes, waiting, waiting yes, to come on the podcast. Don't excited though. Look, okay, I've never been excited my entire life. No, oh, that's not true. It's but... part of my monotone aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and also joining us this week, uh, a, a regular on um, Flea Market Fantasy, it's Cousin Brandon, everybody. Thank you for Hello. joining us from Pennsylvania. Thank you for having me again. It's Look, to be the lone American, this is, this is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and just to, so everyone knows, now you've guessed it on Flea Market Fantasy how many times now? It's only been four or three, five. Three or four. Four, I think it's one okay. of the two. And it's always been my intent to l- try to get you to, you know, pick your own comics. Somehow I always end up picking them for you, even though in my memory I didn't pick them for you. And your reviews. <laughs> so, okay. So, so let just, me let me weigh in already. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> this, this is already egregious. You, <laughs> the only the only one that I picked, I want to say we did a Secret Wars. That I picked. Yes. The yes. other three were goddamn nonsense, and they were terrible. the The worst of all had to have been that Superman comic. I couldn't have been more boring. It was Wait, essentially more, just like more nonsensical than Secret Wars. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you Wars. like Secret Wars? It, You've got to go. You won't fit in. <laughs> okay, take care, Canada. It's been Hi, fun. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> So Brandon loves Secret Wars. That's why we were doing it. Right? Secret, the first Secret Wars is fantastic. Sorry. I don't know. We read it all and reviewed it, and I disagree. You know what? I don't need this. I don't need <laughs> Canadian whiplash. I don't come on here to be demeaned. I come on here to have some cocktails and enliven things and bring a little energy. Not to be yelled at. Okay, so let's talk about... So Secret Wars was awesome. Then we did Superman. Which one was it? Was it when he got his de- depowered? It was the one I don't remember. What do I, all I remember about it? It was that it was all exposition. Where I'm like, you could have just shown this shit rather than. Oh, 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 oh. that was Man of Steel. Thing. John it Burns' was this origin story, and it was right. terrible. It, it was, was garbage. Rather, yes. And then there was that other shit comic you made me read with the Angler or whatever, yeah. and See? that was. No, no, no. I gave Brandon a list of like seven comics. I said, oh my God, I said, no, I'm not, said, it was not what I wanted. I would pick Quasar, but he uh-huh. thought Quasar was Warlock. Right, so, I fucked up. Yeah, fucked so up. technically it was your fault. Then the next time he gave, I gave him a list of like, again, like seven comics, and he picked Detective Comics, or he said, he said, <laughs> he detective. and I said, yeah, let's read Detective. And you're like, well, I could read Spider-Man. I could, uh, I'm like, let's read Detective. So the basic, I picked it for him, and then he said, "I want to read it because I remember reading it as a kid." And then when he reread it, he realized he'd never read it before, and he thought it was shit. It was. <laughs> it was garbage. And and I had read Detective Comics. I just hadn't read the one I thought we were going to read, and it was it was like two thousand pages. I'm like, what is this? I'm not reading this. Like I was right. so bored. Like twenty pages, I'm like, quit. Yeah. <laughs> no. So now, to make up for that, we are reading three Spidey comics from 1987. Yes. So tell us, are you a fan of Spider-Man, Brandon? So, so when I collected comics as, as, as a young lad, that was Spider-Man was my favorite. So I collected Amazing, Peter Parker, Web of, uh, Marvel Team-Up. If it, if it was Spider-Man, and then the McFarlane, when that started, like... It was Spider-Man. I collected it. I love Spider-Man. I always thought he was the greatest character. These three comics were fucking garbage. <laughs> okay, what era were you buying Spider-Man around this time? Did yes. You, so you yes. had these as a kid. I had these comics as a kid. Really? Do you remember re- being good? So, so here's what I remember. When when you sent me the links, yeah, yeah. comics, 
I was like, oh my God, I, I recognize these. I own these. I read these. Okay. And then I reread them. I'm like, this is shit. I, I, the only one that had any worth was the amazing Spider-Man was like, okay, that was decent. Those other two were such nonsense. And I was like, how do you get away with writing these and be like, this is our monthly comic. This is terrible. Like what, what you can't do that. You can't have a story about him going to like Belfast and like, who's joy. Joy showed up in two of the three. What the fuck? Who is she? <laughs> Wait, they had a school because we all we read these when we were kids and we loved them, right? Oh, yes. What were you gonna say, Becca? I was gonna say I am a Joy Mercado stan. She is my queen. (laughs) Okay, so why don't we get into We're not gonna get along. We've we've (laughs) right from the get go, there are issues. And I'll tell you what, look like I I love your vibe. I really do. What what's happening, Becca? Um, well, Mike and I have the complete opposite opinion on everything, too. We're still friends. Thank God. Yeah. I'm saying, no, no, no. I'm not saying I don't like you. I'm saying I want to like you, and we're not getting along, and I don't like that. That's what I don't like. What's your favorite comic book movie? Uh, it's uh, Into the Spider-Verse. No, we're yeah. fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. What's your it's favorite a- bad comic book movie? Hold on a second. <laughs> My favorite bad comic book movie that's tough (laughs) i mean wow because it's not really a favorite but it's still one that like i feel like you have to watch is howard the duck oh yeah the first marvel movie there you go it's it's terrible i mean it's dreadful but what what what, what, becca what is yours um all of them all the bad ones (laughs) all of them yeah uh, yeah, no. I know. I'm always the one where we were like, oh, let's go see Batman versus Superman. And I come out and I was like, wow, this is great. And everyone's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but do, you like, do you like the Christopher Nolan Batman or do you like the Michael Keaton Batman? Um, I like the George Clooney Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Digging deep there. Uh, I mean, I'm just it has its merits, but... No. But, but you don't think you don't think it's better than the Tim Burton or Christopher Nolan ones, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite Batman is Kevin Conroy. So. Okay. Who's Kevin Conroy? He's uh, animated. The like, animated. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what? All He's right. dreamy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was gonna try to like try to find something similar, but I don't think we're gonna agree on anything except for no, no, that, no, that's, these that's comics fine. were shit. <laughs> you know, I, I I'd rather have a conversation with somebody who like has some differing opinions than me than just like agreeing like, yep. Yeah, is, I'm with you. Both like these things. Yep. So this is fun. And I mean, it's about comic books. It's not like it's about it's something important. <laughs> right. So we, we're like. Uh, we're both vaccinated and we're both like pro vax, so like that's yeah, cool. Of course, and we hate Trump, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's can I ask those, just because you asked me? Can I can I ask what everybody's favorite comic book movie is? I'm just curious now. I, I agree with you with Into the Spider Verse. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll say I think the best one is probably Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight, but. For vibe and for everything else, it's Superman, the first one, 1978. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I think the first, I love the first two Superman movies. Right. Mm -hmm. I think think there was nothing better. I loved watching him in the second one, uh, essentially where the, uh, I can't remember the names, but the three baddies are like in the void and they're like in that weird flippy. Yeah, get, the mirror. It's wonderful. Mm. It's, it's, I it's love great. it. That was like my youth too. But uh, yeah, Spider Verse. I I don't know, man. That's that's just that's top notch. I mean, I and to be fair, I've not seen the Thor movies. I've not seen Doctor Strange. I've not Spider Verse though. I watched. It, I was like, this is so god. It was a comic book. Yeah. Screen and it was it just perfect. So well, perfect. just like. One of the best Batman movies is the Lego Batman. That was great. Did you see that? Never saw it. I oh, it was really good. You've seen it, right, Becca? No, actually. Oh my god, one. it's excellent. Ooh. Yeah, it's really good. 
Josh, to... you're a fan? Yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. I'm I'm uh I'm really into the the Lego movies too. They're uh sure. super funny and out of the box. Yeah. The Batman yeah. one was great. Yeah. And am am I right to think Will Arnett voiced Batman? Is that correct? Yes, yeah, he did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's awfully funny, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was good. Okay, now we're going to jump into Spidey. Right, here, okay, yeah, maybe guys? we should You don't want to hear about my favorite comic book movie? Oh, sorry, Becca. What is it? It's fan Fortastic. so... You mean fan stick Now Fortastic. I'm leaving. Now we yeah. have a problem, Becca. No, I'm kidding. It's actually Barbarella. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Barbarella's great. Is that based on a comic book? Yeah, starring Pam Anderson. Yep, it's a comic. It's actually st- oh. on, still going on. Wait, 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 wait. Starring wait. who? You're saying barbed wire. Oh, Are yeah, I'm saying? thinking of barbed wire. Yeah, barbed wire. Like, wait a minute. minute. Yeah. <laughs> barbed wire is terrible. I just I just watched that about a month ago. It's awful. <laughs> okay. I hated it. I did. I hated it. No, it's Captain Marvel. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Anyway, Web of. All right. <laughs> Woo! Okay, go. Web of Spider-Man, number 22. Josh, right. tell so, us about this story. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Because <laughs> you're, uh, Joy and Peter are still over in the UK um, doing some, like, investigative journalism uh, with this, like, whole war, this, like, civil war that's going on in the UK. And uh, uh, they kind of, like, stumble upon this, like, gang war that's happening. Um, and... Uh, Peter calls Aunt May and catches up with her and then they like they realize that it's all kind of leading up to the the Roxxon Corporation and they're trying to um, uh, go to this Roxxon building that's being I think like protested uh, just just, like try to interview some of the people there Um, uh, as they're in this like in the middle of this like group protesting one of the guy, like a random guy trips and a soldier thinks it like, you know, kind of turns around and it started to, to cause trouble. And Peter acts like it was just him, like a Joe, oh, I'm just an American, just a tourist. I fell. So they're able to kind of, uh, uh, cover for this guy who they end up, um, talking to and figuring out that, um, He's kind of like he kind of knows a little bit of what's going on. So he brings the two of them to a bar and they interview the people there about what's going on. Um, after that, they're kidnapped. One of the, I think one of the guys in the bars recognize recognizes what's going on and then calls like the gang, like call, calls rocks on and they kidnap them. They uh, are brought to like the head honcho at this uh, a branch of rocks on. I can't remember this dude's name. Uh, it's not important because he dies immediately. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. uh, Ian Forbes. Uh, so he's kind of like in charge of what's going on right now. And it turns out that he is kind of like fueling this war because he was um, uh, years ago put in charge of this uh, project for rocks on to develop these like big Gatlin gun type of like big machinery tanks. And what happens is they will fire. Uh, and after they finish firing the round, they overheat and explode. So the U S stopped production, but they were already like through with building a bunch of them. So he's trying to kind of like fund and fuel a war so he can more easily now sell these like, like faulty tanks to the to the to the uh, the government over in the UK. So um, uh, they 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 once once he kind of reveals his plan and he like monologues this whole thing. He has them locked up and Peter's able to kind of uh, Peter and Joy are able to escape because the guy that they saved earlier on frees them and. Uh, uh, Peter and uh, Peter splits away from them so he can don his spider costume. He uh, he's able to like f- stop what's going on and uh, get you know knock out some goons. But then he realizes that Joy and the other guy have been kidnapped and they're being brought up to a helicopter that's landing on the roof. So he swings up there. He's able to save the day and uh, 
uh, one last goon kind of is there and is about to shoot their friend. And it turns out to be his brother who um, who went missing earlier on. Mm-hmm. And we, we found out in the bar and he uh, he shoots his own brother unknowingly shoots his own brother to save joy. And there's kind of like this emotional moment. We see the helicopters driving away and the real um, villain, like the head of Roxxon, orders uh, uh, a strike on the helicopter as that, uh, uh, the, whatever his name is, uh, Ian Forbes, is, is getting away in the helicopter and it explodes. And we are left with another cliffhanger and presumably another Spidey comic where he's in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just got to say, this is part three, I think, of this nice. ongoing storyline. Uh, for those that don't know, this is this was touted as the new direction for Web of Spider-Man, starting around, I think it was seven, 16 or 17 or 18. It was like, you know, more realistic and Spidey traveling everywhere and doing different things. So far, it's been of middling quality. I don't mind this story, other than the fact that I think it's trying too hard to, like, make a political statement or a me- or send a message. But it sounds like cousin cousin Brandon, you have something you have a lot to say about this one. So tell us. It sounds like you didn't enjoy this one. So tell us what you did or didn't like about it. Yeah. So I I don't remember. Like so, for me to read this as a standalone comic, it was very much out of context, and I was bored as shit. Like <laughs> I'm like, this is Spider Man. I want to see you fight villains who are comic book villains, not getting involved with like, you know, an Irish corporation like Roxon and Blue Hoods and what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> this, this, I'm sorry, to me, less political, more comic booky. knock it off. I, I was just so bored. I, I couldn't believe this was an actual uh, comic book. I, I, I was really disturbed. Now, granted, like you said, Maybe if it was this three-parter and there was something else going on. But to read it as a standalone was nonsense. I hated it. I thought it was garbage. <laughs> I did. I thought it was terrible. Can't wait. What, what did you think of the art? Because this is actually Mark Silvestri, who had a, a you know, a, a famous run on X-Men and Wolverine. Are you familiar with Mark Silvestri's art? I am. Um, I thought it was, again, everything about this comic was boring. Everything. Okay, I didn't so, like the artwork. I, I didn't. I didn't like anything about it. I thought it was just boring. So I read, and and so this was the first of the three that I actually read, and I was like, if this is what I'm getting into, <laughs> I will never speak to Canadians again. <laughs> okay. Okay. With that, Becca, what's your reaction to this comic? <laughs> ah, I liked it. No. Um, uh, I just, it's just like such an interesting way to shoehorn Spidey into Ireland. He's basically just fighting the same goons that he fights in panels in New York, but now they're Irish and British. Um, we shoehorned a bunch of characters that had a bunch of motivations that don't matter and won't matter because they literally are introduced and die in the same issue. Yep. You know, it's a good character when it's just like, I'm evil. I made the <laughs> machines and the government didn't want them because the machines blow up instead of working. Like, yeah, yeah, but no wonder the government didn't freaking want them. <laughs> um, I did like Peter in this issue. I think he's one of the only, like, like everyone else sucks besides Peter and Joy, but even, <laughs> even then it's just like, it feels like a very long filler arc. It's like you're yep. watching an anime and they go to the beach for four episodes and you're just like, <laughs> okay, that's cool. But the, the main bad guy is, is, is at the school. We need to go fight him. But also we're at the beach for, for five episodes. So it's just not it. Um, I'm also like bored with Roxxon being the big bad guy. It's like, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the British government that pissed off the Irish. It was it was the Roxxon company. Like Marvel does that with everything, right? Like it wasn't the Nazis. It was the Red Skull. Like <laughs> okay, so it was the Nazis. Can you, um, can, I'm not can really Becca, familiar. Yeah. Sorry, I was gonna say, can you rem- like was Roxxon an ongoing thing? I can't remember. Was that a thing? This is 
been the last couple issues has been they've been investigating Roxanne's involvement. No, but I mean, but like, did Roxanne appear otherwise outside of like these couple of issues? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really yeah. familiar with modern Roxanne, who's run by a Minotaur who fights Thor. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Roxanne gets cool. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Eventually, what? their CEO is a Minotaur and he fights Thor, and it's actually fun. <laughs> So they figure it out. They figure out how to make the boring okay. company into a comic book company. That's awesome. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't really know anything about Roxanne before the Minotaur joins in. <laughs> okay. I think yeah, I just like I, 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 I didn't know if I was supposed to like know what Roxanne was. I that's the other thing. I was like, okay, it's Roxanne. Okay. Yeah. In context in the comic now, they're like a big like tech company kind of thing and gotcha. like they do good stuff for the world but everything that they do is actually shitty <laughs> right gotcha. and it's all secret gotcha. organization shit yep so i think also like they help i don't know if this sounds right mike but they don't don't they help with forming shield originally i don't think so no, not as far not as them. i know no i don't think I, so i think right now um like during the 80s it's just kind of like shittier Oscorp. Mm-hmm. Oh, like it's just it's just kind right. of like another yeah so it's just well, kind like, of like another big company that's run by a secret evil bad guy that makes whatever is convenient at the time so in this case it's <laughs> giant gun tanks <laughs> i think that well it's always supposed to be like exxon right so it's supposed mm-hmm. to be a, just like the magia or the is a standard for the mafia right so right just change a couple letters yeah <laughs> no one will know yeah, but uh, Josh, what's your review of this one? Did you think it was better or worse than all the first two parts of the story? Um, it's been so long. It's been like two or three weeks since we've even read one of the UK ones because last week was a fill-in. And I, I remember liking the idea of it, but it like not really panning out. Where this one, it feels like um, I'm just totally done with it now. Like it was kind of it was kind of an interesting idea to kind of throw Peter out of his element and he's got to like find ways or reasons to become Spider-Man because Joy is kind of privy to the fact that something weird is going on. He keeps slipping away and uh, Peter and, and then Spider-Man shows up. So that's kind of strange. And then the fact that he's in a completely different country, if he if, if Joy were to see Spider-Man, she would know almost for a fact like. Why is Peter and Spider-Man in a completely different country at the same time? Mm -hmm. So, like, that's a really fun new idea. You know, like, he's got to find new and interesting ways to do this. But it's gotten so old. The story is not worth it. Um, I agree with Becca. I like how Peter and Joy are written in this. But unfortunately, what they're talking about is just nonsensical and boring. So it's like it doesn't end up being fun. What about the art? Did you like the art this time around? Yeah, it's fine. I think it's um, I, I don't know. It's it feels pretty on like in line with on par. everything else that's been going on in web. I don't hate it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think Mark Silvestri is a good artist, but it just depends if you, it, his art tends to be a little sketchy. So it mm. depends if you like that style or not. And it kind of fits because they're they're kind of going for like a spy ish. So having it a little bit more gritty and sketchy, I think, works for the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it definitely didn't like pull me out or anything. Um, there wasn't any times where I was lost either in what was going on. So, right. I mean, it was suc- successful in that sense, too. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty serviceable to the story. Okay, here's the last word on this. Cousin Brandon, do you recommend other people read this comic? No. Okay, <laughs> okay. Not, not <laughs> even a little bit. No, no, I recommend... I do recommend Web of Spider-Man. Again, I... I, I read it, I collected it, I, everything Spider-Man I loved. This specific one, though, again, I, I mean... See, that's the problem. You have to take... When did this come out? 87, you said? 87, yeah. So in, in 1987, I was 12 years old. I mean, right, like... Right. That's, a, that's a very different Cousin Brandon. Right now, this is garbage. I mean, it's... It, I, I thought it was... It, it was... It, it was an assault. I was angry. <laughs> I was like, somebody attacked me. No, thank you. You um, should never go back and read Marvel Team Up then. 
Yeah. <laughs> don't don't ever go back and read Marvel Team. Why? But tell me why. Like, oh, it's awful. Too bad. Oh, yeah. they're awful. They're bad. Really? The last two issues yeah. were okay. Yeah, there were two issues that we liked out of the, the one two that you liked. What was it? It was one. Yeah, it was like the last one was pretty good. I think it was Human Torch he teamed up with, and then there was oh. one earlier was, on with Gargoyle. It was Cannonball. Oh. That, right. The, it was was it the Cannonball? It cannon- yeah, because they were written by Louis Simonson. That's why they were but good. I think the Gargoyle one was fantastic. Yeah. That's funny because Human Torch is one of my least favorite characters too. So I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to read that. But that's <laughs> but but you know, fine. Hey, mm. I should maybe find it and read it. So yeah, sorry. I I feel like I'm talking too much. I don't want to. Please. No, no. It's you, a- guys, you guys are the experts. I'm just this American <laughs> drunk idiot. Quit okay. talking. It's not like it's an audio format. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I was say, nobody, nobody wants to hear me. I've got nothing to offer. Oh, you're the special guest. You technically just, can talk more than the rest of us. But all I do is complain. That's, That's what, okay. Well, whatever. Yeah, we don't do that here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is a no complaining podcast. Uh, yeah, no, I I also, I kind of have to agree. I, I would not recommend this one. Um, it's, it does nothing. I don't know, like, again, nothing I, I've said this like a lot on the podcast, but nothing nece- necessarily needs to change from the start to the end of the podcast or the the uh, issue. Sure. But s- at least something interesting has to happen for me to want to continue the issue and for me to pick up the next. And if I didn't have to read this for a podcast, I don't think that I would be interested enough to like see it through to the end. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be a recommend for me. Yeah, and if I can add too, the only interesting thing that happened, as far as I'm concerned, is that the guy killed his own brother. What the fuck does that have to do with <laughs> Spider Man? I don't. I well, I just, that's something. I mean, it's clearly a message about like. You know, in in situations like this, you know, brother kills brother, and we all suffer a little bit, right? And that's what the message is supposed to be. I think. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> okay i'm fine Becca, with his brother dying do you recommend this issue Becca? uh i feel like what's this issue 22 of web um what's web doing if it, it's gone like eight different directions none of them have been great um yeah mm-hmm. that's I what just, i remember about web of spider-man it was yeah. it, it, it didn't feel like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump in again, but like, like even even my memory about it, it's been, what, 30 years. It never felt like a cohesive comic. It just felt like, OK, now we're going to just do this and we'll try this. It right. just didn't. It never felt right to me. Mm-hmm. I read it because it was Spider-Man, but it, it was never very good, mm-hmm. at least initially. I'm like, no, thanks. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I actually do. I'll give this one a mild recommendation because I think it's a decent story. I mean, I've read far worse, so I don't have a big problem with it. I think it was kind of on par with other Web of Spider-Man, so I'll still give it a mild recommendation. (laughs) Oh, but okay. Before we get back to Spidey, can I also say I think you're the most retweetable person on Twitter? Oh, thank you. That's Uh, nice. You're the only one that feels that way, but thank you. Well, let me just read my favorite here. Let me here's here's this quote. Let me save you some time. The answer to every BuzzFeed quiz is you're lonely. Please <laughs> <laughs> oh, know what kind help. of grilled cheese sandwich I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, let's jump back into Spidey, guys. We'll, we'll talk about All dogs right. later, okay? <sighs> no dogs on this issue, zero out of ten. <laughs> now we're going to talk about Amazing Spider-Man 284. This is part one of the gang war. And for those that are paying attention, Tom DeFalco only plots this issue. He does not dialogue it, which means he plotted it out with Ron Friends. Ron Friends drew it. Then Tom DeFalco got fired. Then Jim Owsley dialogued the comic. So that's how these things work. So we're going to talk about Tom DeFalco getting fired more next week. But, uh, Cousin Brandon, are you familiar with Tom DeFalco? I, re- I remembered the name. I did, okay. like, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, okay, I know the name. But I, beyond that, not really. Well, he was, okay, so he's kind of like a, he was the editor-in-chief of Marvel after Jim Shooter was fired. 
Uh, he started out in Archie Comics, then he did Supergirl, and then he wrote Spider-Man, then he wrote Thor, Fantastic Four. Oh, so he's kind of, he's wow. kind of like a, a retro, no, I don't want to say retro, but he's like a, a, a good old-fashioned, you know, roots kind of writer. Like, he's just into the straight-ahead superhero stuff, nothing deep, but it's always entertaining. Gotcha. And then Ron Franz is kind of the same type of artist, you know, it's the same kind of deal, like a classic Marvel artist. So, Becca, you were going to no. summarize this one for us, right? No? I was going to, yeah. Oh, okay. I've, I've, I've been doing amazing pretty consistently, I think. Okay. Um, so this one, everybody hold on, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, the best issues of Spider-Man are the ones where there's so many people in them that it doesn't matter who's there. <laughs> um, so we start off the issue, we're in like an abandoned warehouse. Um, people are smuggling who knows what. And we have, there's like a dark figure dressed in black in the rafters and you think it's Spider-Man, but it's not Spider-Man. Spoiler alert. Uh, I think it's um, Lance Bannon taking pictures. But... Spider-Man is swinging by, hears the commotion, and does just smash right through the window to come beat up these guys for smuggling, whatever they're smuggling. And um, his spider sense goes off, and then the hobgoblin just shoots right in and is like, hey, I was here to stop these guys from smuggling things, but I'll beat up on Spider-Man too, because uh, there's a gang war happening. I don't know if you can tell from the title. Um, so every like faction in New York is basically fighting with one another because the kingpin's on vacation. <laughs> Which they don't say he's on vacation. It's like implied that he's like out of commission, but like they say he's just on vacation. So there's a little fight between um, Spider Man and Hobgoblin when Spider Man's like, well, wait a second. Why am I even doing this? Like, I don't need to be here. Nobody's in danger, whatever. So the cops show up and he, he younces. Um, but he's, he had his camera ready, so he has some pictures that he wants to bring to the bugle. He goes to the bugle. It's very late at night. Everyone's there because they're talking about the gang war. Um, he tries to sell his, sells his pictures. Um, Kathleen Cushing is like, nah, I already got Lance Bannon's way better pictures. Um, and then Sp Peter Spider Sense goes off because Ned Leeds is there. I wonder what that means. Um, <laughs> Ned and Betty have an argument because Betty's a cheating bitch and Ned's an asshole. <laughs> um, but he does like gr like grab his estranged wife to like, dude, calm down. Like, he, I get she cheated on you, but like, relax. Um, and Peter's like, well, that's weird. And he's been having like these spider sense, his spider senses go off with Ned for like the last month and a half. So then we go back over to. Um, the arranger, which is, I think he works for Kingpin, and he's like telling all of these like random goons, they're like, ah, Kingpin's on vacation, everyone shut up. Um, and he's showing that he has hired Jack o' Lantern to attack Silvermane for some reason. He's just, I, th I think he's just scaring him to like stay out of the gang oh. war. I don't know. <laughs> so they have a little kerfuffle. Peter goes and visits Aunt May. They have a nice little meeting. He gets stuck painting her kitchen. And then mm. we go to the Rose's penthouse where the Hobgoblin's just pacing back and forth. Um, they talk about the gang war some more and how the Rose is like, ah, oh, we got to stay out of it. It's not good economics, blah, blah, blah. And then there's another, we pan over to another scene. Amazing loves to just have like 85 different locations going on at once. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this is an operation by the Rose. And I forget, I don't know what they're doing. They're like, there's a bunch of telephones everywhere. I'm not entirely sure how cr criminals work. Um, but the police show up because, uh, what's his name? Captain Keating got a, a hot tip because he's not suspicious <laughs> at all. Uh, a hot tip that, um, there was going to be some shenanigans happening and they, they arrest those guys and Captain King's like, I'm going back to the station, but he goes the opposite direction of the station. So Spidey is swinging along back home after visiting Aunt May and he finds Roderick Kingsley is having a conversation with Captain Keating in his car. <laughs> and he's, he's, Peter's like, oh, maybe I should figure out what's going on. And then he's like, you know what? Screw it. I don't even want to be Spider-Man anyway. So he just <clears> keeps <throat> swinging. Um, he hears gunshots, he tries to intervene again, but then decides to not intervene again because he's late for a date with Mary Jane, I think. And then we pan over to the eighth location of the issue, which is <laughs> um, a restaurant where Hammerhead 
who I don't think has been in this comic for either a long time since I started reading it for the podcast, but everyone's favorite gangster with a metal plate in his skull hammerhead, and mm-hmm. he gets exploded. <laughs> I don't think he's dead, <laughs> yes. but but um, they just blow him up, and then the arrangers like admiring his hard work about like fighting off all these other gang members, and then Wilson Fisk's son calls him on the phone, and everyone's like freaking out. So we go back to Peter Parker's apartment where Mary Jane has just made herself at home and Peter shows up through the skylight and Mary Jane is not even phased anymore that he just doesn't (laughs) use the door, which good for her, you know, progress. So instead of sitting at home and letting the most beautiful redheaded woman in the world make him dinner, Peter's like, ah, my responsibility is going off again and has to go after he hears all this, like the casualties happening on the news, he has to go help stop the gang war. And then just at the end of the issue, Betty is sad and she's going home and she's like, huh, my door's been open. That's weird. It doesn't think anything of it. And it turns out that Flash Thompson has broken into her house and needs her help. So that's where the issue ends. Um, Wow. That's a whole lot of nothing. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. I do think it was a small step better than average because... I think Jim Owsley is actually a better writer, or at least a better dialoguer than Tom DeFalco. So I did notice a slight improvement in the dialogue. And I always appreciate, I like the fact that Amazing Spider-Man jumps around so much and there's so much going on and it's juggling all these different characters. I think that's cool. But uh, yeah, I do get the feeling that it's sort of just moving pieces around without much thought of how everything connects together, I guess. It's kind of just... Not necessarily throwing stuff at a wall, but maybe it, it it doesn't amount to much, like you said. Like, a lot's going on, but it doesn't amount to much. But I still did enjoy this one. I don't know. I mean, it wasn't a masterpiece, but I thought it was fine. Uh, Cousin Brandon, what was your impression of this issue? Yeah, of so of the three comics we read, this was by far the best. Um, I, I remembered it in rereading it. I really remembered, oh, yeah, like... Uh, Silvermane and Hammerhead and uh, Kingpin and the, like the Rose is a character I hadn't thought about forever. So it was actually I I, I enjoyed I guess all the characters and I enjoyed that there was something going on. I so I'm gonna have to ask this though because I don't remember. Does it turn out is Ned Leeds actually the Hobgoblin or the? Jack O'Lantern, I can't remember. So you are not on to, the right path. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to spoil this for our listeners. So if you're listening right now, we're going to talk about the Hobgoblin's real identity. But at this point in the comic, Tom DeFalco was intending to reveal that the Hobgoblin was Ned Leeds. But he was leaving all these red herrings like, oh, is it Roderick Kingsley? Is it Captain Ke- or what Was it Keating? Keating. Yeah. Keating. Captain yeah. Keating, whatever. But... Before, when Roger Stern created Green uh, Hobgoblin, it was supposed to be Roderick Kingsley. So what happens is they were planning all along, we're going to reveal it as Ned Leeds, we're going to reveal it as Ned Leeds. And then in a couple issues, something funny happens that I don't want to talk about. But eventually Ned Leeds is revealed to be Hobgoblin. But then like five years later, Tom DeFalco comes, or sorry, Roger Stern comes back and he wrote a story called Hobgoblin Lives, and he publishes like his version of how he wanted it to turn out. And now Roderick Kingsley is officially the Hobgoblin, and he always was. Sure. So, yeah, <laughs> so, like, kind of, he kind isn't, of retconned it, you know? Yeah, isn't there like some like brainwashing thing? I think he brainwashed yeah. Ned Leeds. Yeah. Leeds Hobgoblin. Oh, and the other thing you mentioned was... Uh, jack-o'-lantern so what ends up happening is jack-o'-lantern finds hobgoblin's costume and takes over with like around web of spider-man 30 something ish he becomes the hobgoblin for like yeah five years or whatever he becomes the demon goblin remember that when he turned into a demon yeah yeah that was the jack-o'-lantern version yeah jason mackendale jesus how confusing exactly yeah, there's, there's a couple jack-o'-lanterns and a bunch of hobgoblins right true yes mm-hmm. true and like, but to, they're oh, all like sorry. the same. They're, they're like, <laughs> this guy was the jack o' lantern and hobgoblin. Like that happens a bunch, I think. <laughs> yes. But to, and so ultimately, right? If I remember correctly, like Flash Thompson is not any of these. No, no. 
Right. That was all okay. a ruse. Right. Okay. Well, even in the comic, like you know that he's not. Like yeah, right like, away. Like, mm-hmm. Because yeah, it's it's like given away that like the hobgoblin. You see the hobgoblin and Flash in the same panel, and Spider like when Spider Man's fighting, but. Like, so only the reader knows that Flash isn't the Hobgoblin, but everyone else thinks, doesn't know? Okay. Huh. I don't know. I mean, like I said, for me, like, of the three we read, this one was at least interesting. Like, I, like, I know that it jumps all over the place, but Amazing Spider-Man of the Spider-Man comics was always my favorite. I always just thought Mm -hmm. it, it was... Like, I, I like the art the best. I liked the writing the best. I like the stories the best. Like, it just always felt like, in a sense, that, like, Webb, uh, Peter Parker, they were just like, ah, eh, we're going to, we're tag alongs. We're like, okay, let's make something else about, but this I thought was by far the best of the three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it, Amazing is usually, like, the most consistently good to average um same with the art i don't think there's really ever been a time where we're like oh man the art in amazing is just awful this week um, yeah yeah it's usually the most consistent and even though this one was pretty like flat and boring as far as like story goes at least there's like small interesting bits that are happening yeah that are that are interesting like you know there's like these little moments that you can hold on to and be like oh that was fun oh i like that but all together it was just kind of like all right sure <laughs> i guess i guess kingpin is gone and all these guys are mad at each other for some reason sure and uh also at this point too i'm like over the hobgoblin thing um i'm not it's just been going on for so long and <laughs> And it's not like more is being revealed. It's uh, every issue is just like, maybe it's this guy. He's kind of fishy. Ooh, that guy's kind of fishy. Maybe it's him. It's like there's no there's never any like anything of substance that's like revealed to make you go. Oh, maybe it maybe it's this person. Like there's never any direction. It's just kind of like a lineup of six guys and they're all kind of like twirling their mustache. Like, Like which one of these goons is it? Doesn't matter. They're all idiots. Yeah. They're all bad people. Who cares which one it is? And you know what's funny is on top of that mystery, I don't know if you guys noticed, they're also trying to develop the identity of the Rose as a secret. And so at the on Digital 13, the Rose is like, um, he starts to take off his mask. Then he yeah. has his mask off. Then we don't see what happens. But do you? does anyone know who the Rose really is? No, I was going to ask you. I, I don't know remember. who he is. Oh, awesome. Who was it? Uh, do you know Josh? He's yes, he's spoiler. Fisk. Yeah, he's the son. yeah, he's Kingpin's son. Oh, so shit, that's right. so in this yeah. issue, the for, uh, the the arranger is in his office, and the person is like, uh, you know, someone's at the door. But sir, it's Richard Fisk, Mister Fisk's son. So the reader does not know that that's the rose yet because it hasn't been revealed. But we know, right? Right. So. I don't oh, remember it. Does. Wilson Fisk know his son is the Rose? I don't think so. Uh, I could be wrong, yeah, but I don't think so. No. I didn't remember. I was like, I don't think he knows that. I thought he like is estranged or like thinks he's in another country or something. I don't That's remember. That's so, so good. Yeah. I did so, but so remind me though. Like, so we were just talking about this. Is uh, Wilson Fisk? Is he actually on vacation or is he like? I, I don't, I'm not sure, because I think he, it's all being covered in Daredevil, I'm not sure. Yeah, he got into a fight with Daredevil and lost, and now he's, like, recovering or something. Oh, interesting, okay. Some shit goes down with Daredevil, as that it always sense. does. Okay, because I'm like, there's no way he's just, like, taking, like... Beach episode! Yeah, Wilson Fisk in a bikini! <laughs> I mean, Sorry, I think I jerk off. Can you give me a minute? I'm like... <laughs> I mean, he's a very powerful man. He could be just on vacation, but I think he got his ass kicked by Daredevil. It's surprising how how often Kingpin shows up in his underwear in these comics. <laughs> Honestly, Thank God for small little things. If we didn't have the little things, what would we have? All right. So okay, I guess the last question is, uh, Becca, do you recommend this issue? Yeah. No, I had a. Honestly, this one started off the best for me. That whole, like, 
oh, look, Spider-Man's in the rafters watching, and it's not Spider-Man? Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? Dope. Yeah, it was it was cool. Did you know who it was? I, I think it's like um they try to say that it's Ned, but it looks like it's it's Eddie, right? Well, it's I think it's Punisher, right? That's who they reveal at the end. <laughs> Wait. What? Wait. Wait huh? What? Punisher? I don't think so. Wait, was Taking that the, pictures in the was rafters? That, was that this issue? Where does the Punisher show up? Not in any Not of in these any issues. Disease. What the hell am I reading then? Not if sure. That's the, if that's the Punisher, they I don't think they revealed that if that's the Punisher. Yeah, they, they like I didn't think that. I they pretty sec. much say like, oh Peter, I don't need your pictures of this warehouse fight because yeah. uh, Lance Bannon brought yeah. me all these pictures. So I thought it was Lance Bannon. Yeah. yeah. I mean it does look like it could be Eddie Brock from like the, the silhouette. And they, they have started setting up Eddie, right? So where the hell did but I read the Punisher? I'm pretty sure it's Lance <laughs> Are you yeah, thinking cause... about the cartoon from last week? Yeah, we watched an episode with the Punisher. No, it wasn't that. No, honestly, I don't know where I read that, but I just read a story where this exact uh, is this missing pages. Like I, I remember reading this. I'm losing my mind here. Why would the Wait. Punisher be taking pictures of bad guys, not being the show? Okay, I'm gonna go get the original issue. Give me one second. Okay. okay. Well, wait. While while he's gone, what what epi- or sorry, what issue? Amazing Spider-Man was this? This one was uh, two eighty four. Yeah. Sorry, what was it? Okay. Two eighty four. So, because like definitely like everything with McFarland shows up around two ninety nineties, right? Right, two ninety eight, I think. So yeah, two ninety eight. I, I right. wouldn't think any. I wouldn't think it's Eddie Brock at this point. He's already been in the in Have amazing. He? Just ah! his arm, just really? his arm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay, guys, you are not going to believe this. Okay, you see how this issue ends with uh, Flash Thompson like in the doorway. Yeah. Uh, there's more pages. Okay. Can you see this? Can you see what I'm holding up? No, you've got yeah. the filter on. Okay, just a minute. Oh, it I'm looks like the last. That's the last page that I have. Okay, just a minute here. Uh, blur is off. Okay, can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, there's the last page digitally. Look at this. There's another page where the hobgoblin's flying around, hanging out, blah blah blah. And then, sure enough, someone's shooting at him. And guess who it is? It's the Punisher. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, so that guy on page one actually was the Punisher. What? For some reason, these pages were cut out of the digital edition. What the hell? It's so weird, yeah. Are you sure that it was still the wow. Punisher being the guy taking pictures? Well, I mean, that's debatable, but... I Regardless, think that's, that's a huge... I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they would do that. Yeah, because the, wow. the next issue, next the issue. Punisher's on the cover. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, I'm looking at this. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Maybe it's Lance Bannon. Maybe Punisher just came in at the wow. end. I'm not sure, but... That's crazy. Yeah. I knew I didn't dream that up. So, what anyway. You know, edition? you know what's weird, too? I'm scrolling through, and uh, the first time we see Hobgoblin in the next issue, he said, the first thing he says is, the Punisher's back. I must mistook him for that lunatic Spider-Man the other night and fired see? on him. Oh my God. And then it says last issue. There you go. Well, so, so anyway. Weird. Yeah. Oh, I, I just, yeah, I pulled up uh, on Google Images uh, 285. Yeah, it's it's Punisher. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that is I was, weird. I was scrolling through the comments on the digital issue we're reading just to see if maybe someone else pointed it out. But the only comment is, Ned is a cuck. So, yeah. Yeah, not so helpful. By, by the not helpful. Uh, classic <laughs> comics fan, Joe Mama. That's awful. Right, right. <laughs> That's awful. Okay, so I don't know where we are. <laughs> Has everyone given their recommendations yet? I, I uh, recommend this one. I think it's fun. I do, too. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I mean, Jack O'Lantern's in it, so love it. Mm-hmm. I love this idea. I like Jack O'Lantern, too. I, agree. I, I also got to say, I, I don't like when supervillains are just 
I can't stand it when they're like, I'm going to wreak havoc until Spider-Man appears, or I'm going to fight Spider-Man. I like when it it, it serves as more like a, an allegory for the mob, right? Where everyone is, it's like organized crime, except they just happen to be, look like the jack-o'-lantern or hammerhead mm-hmm. or hobgoblin. That's much cooler. Yeah. So that's one thing I've always liked about Spider-Man. I Can I add I, one? Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, the only like criticism I really have is there's too many... Who is who is it in this issue? Mm-hmm. The Rose, right. the Hobgoblin, and Captain Keating too, right? Well, he's just a re- he's he's like one of the uh, possible identities for Hobgoblin, so he's not a third. You know what I mean? Are you sure? Because I know who he is. What do you mean? Do you do you know who Captain Keating is? No, who is he? Oh, <laughs> oh, is that another thing? Who is he? Can you tell us? I don't want to spoil it. Okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Well, gonna, can, I, can I add an unrelated thing? Hey, yeah. Peter, stop trying to fuck your aunt. It's disgusting. <laughs> anyway. like, I get so disgusting. I was always like, hey, you should be uh, a mo-, like, yuck. Just stop. I Enough. think he's a nice gentleman. I, he's being I, very I sweet to his I aunt. Gross. I think like she's an old woman and you're like 22. Stop trying to fuck your aunt. It's disgusting. I hate it. But she's oh. basically his mom. She's like, oh, that does not make it better. I hate to tell you. <laughs> Stop trying to fuck your mom, Peter. Okay? Gross. Okay, on that note, uh, now we're going <laughs> to jump. Yeah, we're going to jump to Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man. And I'm going to review this one. So mm-hmm. on the cover, we have Spider-Man fighting a character called the Mauler. Does anyone here remember or know nope. the Mauler? And no. I probably won't after today. Nope. Well, I don't. I barely remember him, but I thought it was cool the way this was done. But anyway, so Spidey's fighting the Mauler on the cover. It's a Rich Buckler cover, and Mauler is saying, "I want my son back, and no one will stop me." And then the title is "Father's Night Out." So then we jump into the issue, and basically Peter Parker is walking along the street, and sure enough, he comes across what he thinks is a cat. It turns out to be a baby. Uh, uh, a baby just that's been abandoned in an alley, which unfortunately, I don't know if it happened more often in the 80s, but it has been known to happen from time to time. People just abandon their babies in like dumpsters and stuff like that. So Peter Parker comes across one of them. But then what happens is right away, there's a guy there with an Irish accent who's yelling at him to get his baby back. So they get into a fist fight. Spidey knocks him out or knocks him over. He changes into, Peter Parker changes into Spider-Man, takes the baby, uh, straps him to his back, takes him to a uh, hospital, and, like, is having a conversation with the nurse. Then the doctor comes in, but the the doctor starts mouthing off about Spider-Man, how he's a menace and all this stuff. So he's like, you know what, I'm out of here. So Spider-Man takes off. We cut over to the Daily Bugle the next day, and we uh, hook up with him and Joy Mercado. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson is there. Basically, it's the same old story. He's got nothing to take photos of. He always needs money. So they get sent to take photos of, oh yeah, this story, right? So they end up, and then meanwhile, there's this pointless scene of uh, Spider-Man stopping a purse snatching that goes nowhere. (laughs) So they end up going to the hospital, and just as they're in the hospital, uh, we see the same guy from earlier, the father of the baby, being kicked out by the orderlies. And we had this really weird scene where in the middle of him yelling back and forth with Peter and Joy, they he's also getting a Coke out of this Coke machine. And so he is talking, talking, yelling, yelling, grabs the Coke, takes a sip, throws the Coke out the window, smashes the window. <laughs> and then he gets another Coke. Says, throws that one up at the window right below. It smashes that one. The whole time that he's doing this, he's explaining to them that actually it was his wife that threw the baby out the window because they got into this big argument and blah, blah, blah. And now there's going to be a custody battle, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so he takes off. So now it's just Peter and Joy. So uh, Peter changes into Spider-Man. He's swinging all around New York. And of course, he comes across the baller. So they start talking. And then he realizes, wait a minute. I didn't realize... This is this is the guy from earlier. I just didn't recognize his voice because I guess talking to the suit, it sounds distorted or whatever. So then they start fighting back and forth. And this guy, all he cares about is um, getting his son back. So they're fighting back and forth, fighting, fighting. 
and uh, you know, you know, debris is getting knocked off of buildings, and Spider-Man is shooting his web, protecting the people down below. The Mauler ends up going into the hospital, and uh, the fight. Oh, look at that! The Coke machine comes back. Spider-Man's throwing the Coke machine at him. That gets shot, uh, and then uh, the, the Mauler ends up breaking into the hospital room and uh, stealing. This is a really long fight scene. Mm-hmm. He ends up stealing the baby, and like they're fighting back and forth. Me, you know, Spider Spider-Man's limited to what he can do because Mauler's holding this baby, but they're chasing each other up and down different floors through elevator shafts. Uh, oh, so no, he doesn't have the baby yet. Oh, he, no, finally he gets the baby on page 21. So this is a long fight, like I said. Um, steals the baby and basically goes down uh, in front of the cops. The cops are trying to, like, talk him down and convince him, you know, you know, to give the baby up. And he's like, and then Spider-Man is trying to, like, you know, give him psychology. He's like, do you hear what I'm saying, Doyle? All your instincts are for you. You have to love your child more than you love yourself. Do you? Well, and he says, no, blast you, wall crawler. No, it seems I've been a mercenary too long. And so basically he does, he, he, oh, then he says, um, all I wanted was one thing. Was that too much to ask? Yes, maybe it was. Or maybe I just asked too late. So he puts the baby down. People start shooting. The cops start shooting. But then they realize maybe that's a bad idea. So then uh, Mahler takes off. The baby is now safe with the cops. Spider-Man, um, you know, is talking uh, with the, I think, is this Chris Keating? Yeah, it is. He's talking with Chris Keating. And he's like, well, don't have me that man of torment jazz. This whole thing has been a debacle and not a single good thing came out of it. And then we cut back to another ongoing subplot in the middle of the fight, which was that a woman was pregnant and now she's had the baby. So it's kind of like a little happy ending for her. And that is the end of the issue. Now, summarizing the story didn't sound like much was going on because not much is going on. But I actually <laughs> did enjoy this one more than the other two, including Amazing Spider-Man, Cousin Brandon, I'll have you know. So I actually did really like this issue, despite the fact that not much happened. But cousin Brandon, you can tell us your thoughts first. Sucked. What's that? Sucked. <laughs> I mean, okay. Like, um, so tell us why. Well, I didn't give a fuck. I, I, like, here's the thing. Like, it's cool in a way. Like, I like the idea of Spider-Man being like sympathetic and empathetic, and and you know. And sort of like, yeah, let's let's give this guy a break ultimately in the end. But at the same time, what a boring co- like. I I don't care. I mean, I, who cares? Who cares about any of this? Like, what a boring issue of like. Oh, I found this boy, and now the mall. Are, like, like what a dumb like. Sorry, it's stupid. I don't give a shit. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> I thought it was so lame. I'll tell you why I care because I've read a million stories about a supervillain robbing a bank. I've never read a story about a supervillain desperately trying to get his baby son back. So for that reason, at least this is unique, this plot line, I thought. But let's hear what other people have to say. (laughs) Go ahead, Josh. I think that the problem with this whole story, I, I like what you're saying, Mike. I like the idea Right. Like the supervillain is just trying to get his kid back. That's a really cool concept. It grounds the character. You know, you you can really relate to them. Um, But this one, it's like. We're first introduced to this guy and he's the first thing he says is she won't let me have the kid because I'm a mercenary and it's too dangerous for me to have a kid. And then he steals the kid, and this whole issue is about him trying to get the kid. And then Spider-Man says, it's too dangerous for you to have a kid. You're a mercenary. And he's like, you're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never thought about that. And he, puts the baby down. <laughs> he puts the baby down and leaves. Like, wait, you we you already knew that at, when we first met you. What what changed from now to uh, from then to now? Like, what's happening? It, it doesn't make like I think that's why this uh, issue <laughs> really falls flat is because there's no reason for him to, like, stop at the end of the day. Like, he doesn't nothing happens for him to change. It's like the same situation from start to be to, to end. And we're supposed to believe that this character has like grown 
and and something has changed within them to to agree that he he's not fit to to have this baby. He's not fit to care for his own son. But nothing changes from start to end. So it's just like a big fight. But except yes. except for except for Spider Man trying to get a bag of cash, it's it's a baby. Like there's no not nothing happens in this issue. Becca, what do you think? You know, I'm with Josh on this one. I'm like, obviously, you don't want to see a baby get hurt. But in this massive fight, don't you think maybe like the baby, I don't know, like getting a teeny tiny little cut on its forehead, like the tiniest one and start crying. And then Mahler's like, oh, shit, right. you're right, Spider-Man. I can't be a father to this child. Look, I hurt him. Maybe I should have mm-hmm. some self-reflection. But no, it's just an object to be passed around. Um Mm. And then they make the Mauler so one-dimensional where he's just angry and wants his yeah. kid mm-hmm. instead of, like, he could have had a heart-to-heart with Spider-Man. He could have right. been like, don't you know what it, like, I've ne- I never had anything in my entire life, and now I have this, and I want to change, and I want to be better. But no, steal a baby. Um, I do want to read a little excerpt from the Marvel fandom wiki really quickly and it's the sure. um it's the the entire history of daniel blair who is this little baby boy mm. um what yeah his name is daniel blair danny was brandon doyle the mauler's son after his mother abandoned him the child's custody was refused from brandon because his criminal record as the mauler even though mm. brandon let him go because he thought danny would be safer without him the boy died at age five in a bus collision and that's uh, all it says. What? That's all it says. Really? What? What? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what? So. Wow. This this child is in two issues of comic books. He is in oh this issue. Oh my god. Of spectacular, and then he is brought back up in Avengers <laughs> Volume Five of in September 2014 to be hit wow. by a bus, and that is wow. It. That's so, incredible. I love so, comic books. <laughs> yes. So someone obviously read this and was like, "Why I'm kill that no kid. one brought back I'm kill this kid. baby?" Yeah. Oh my okay. god. Okay. I have a um, little. Oh, go ahead, Becca. I was gonna say I have some actual also opinions. I just thought that that was hilarious, but like. Agreed. I love the two cans of Coke through the window. Like, can we just it, like talk about the right. comedic genius of two it's cans like, through the? Like, it's, it's like so an good. Arrested Development joke. Like every yeah. time he says his name, he's got to throw a can, and he just pays for another one just to get the can, so he can say his name again and throw it through a different window. And then the cops like, "Hey, you kids, quit breaking windows!" And they're like, "No, was, that's that's the funniest joke that's been in all three of these issues." Is that that can gag? Um, so, but yeah, I did like it for that. Because that was actually genuinely very funny and will always be funny, I think. Can I tell, tell you guys about a rejected joke from this issue? Oh, Uh-oh. apparently in the original script by Peter David, when the nurse asked Spider-Man if the baby belongs to him, Spider-Man's response was, gee, I don't know. Let's throw him against the wall and see if he sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and the, yeah, that's so, funny, too. Okay. That's pretty uh, yeah. funny. I will say good. Spidey's quips uh, were pretty funny. Uh, in this issue, um, I liked his uh, comedic dialogue. Um, can we also talk about how this guy's got <laughs> one of the stupidest looking costumes? <laughs> <laughs> He's got like a welding helmet on and a bunch of tubes that power his wrist and are connected to his heart. He also has a giant cowbell on his arm. Like, <laughs> is that what it is? It looks like a giant cowbell. Is that a cowbell? He's got a couple cowbells on his belt, too. <laughs> you never know, right? He's got uh, two well, cowbells on his feet. No, no, He is an Iron Man villain, so I think he's created to be, you know, a rival to Iron Man. Like, all the armor and stuff, you know? So, mm-hmm. so why why the Mauler? Why, why, like, what a dumb name, then. Like, uh... Why? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, All the good names were taken? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. he got bit by a spider. <laughs> but there was already a Spider-Man, so he was like, shit, I'll go with the Mauler. It doesn't make any sense, but whatever. 
That's all we have Fair left. Enough. Like, what a stupid name. He Bob took Bob a. Bob. He took a BuzzFeed quiz on what supervillain name he Yeah. Had. yeah. Right, because he may as well have been called the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because the armor that he stole from Tony Stark was the Mahler armor. Really? Yes, apparently. <laughs> oh. I don't know if that's a retcon, just to make it make sense, though. Uh, mm. Oh, by the way, I just Googled Jordan Mercado. I had no idea. She first appeared in Moon Knight. Did you guys know that? Shout out. Yeah, I did not. Yeah. I had no you idea. You think she'll either. be in the Moon Knight show? That'd be great. Maybe. Yeah. Remind me, who's is is it's not Oscar Isaac, right? He's not yeah. Like, yeah, he is. He is. Oh, he's, he's great. Awesome. He's yeah, so great. good. Oh, he's so good. Mm-hmm. Nice. So okay, let's talk about recommendations. Obviously, I recommend this issue. I thought it was I thought it was good for all the reasons we talked about the dialogue, the quips. The story was thin, but I still enjoyed it. And I did like the art. The art was pretty good. Uh, Cousin Brandon, do you recommend this one? <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> All right. Woo! Uh, Josh, what about you? Do you recommend this one? Uh, no, I don't think so. This this could be a fun one, maybe, for a comic writer to revisit, though. And uh, Kill give, another like, character. A, give, yeah. give, give a compelling backstory to a supervillain, right? Like make him a father. He's trying to he, he's doing something that is definitely bad, but he thinks he's doing it for the right reasons mm-hmm. and have him change by the end of the issue and realize that he's not fit to take care of it. Like everything he's doing is the reason why he shouldn't be taking care of the kid. Right. So that, that's a really fun, interesting idea. I think it was just like. Um, a shitty excuse to have a fight last for <laughs> more than half an issue and nothing happens in the fight. They just are punching each other right. in a hospital. So, no, I don't recommend it. Uh, Becca? Bex, Bex Luthor. That's me. Um, I don't know. The Coke can joke's really good. I just, yeah. I love a good gag. And like for that, just. Just read the couple panels for the gag. I mean, the art's also really good. I don't know if we talked about that. It's, like, not anything, like, crazy. Like, there's no, like, panel that I'm like, wow, that's interesting. But, like, it's decent, right? I think this- so. Mm-hmm. Um, who, who was the artist? It's uh, Rich Buckler. My favorite. Okay. <laughs> Is and it I, really? I, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I isn't he the guy that draws the girls? No, that's Mark Beekjim. Ah, uh, right. Sorry, I got distra- I got confused because the first page of this comic book is Peter Parker in the very small corner, while there's just a big busty lady in the other corner. <laughs> right, right. For some reason, I, I was that? worried that it was him too. Uh, but it only happened once, though, and and so it couldn't have been him because Joy was drawn pretty tastefully. So. Good point. And then this guy also drew the Mauler as jacked to all hell. So, like, thirst trap jacked. So, it couldn't have been him. That guy doesn't... The other guy doesn't draw men like that. Just women. But yeah, read it. I don't care. Do whatever you okay, want. Okay. I'm not your boss. I'm not your mom. <laughs> Be thankful. All right. Okay, well, I so... Think that- yeah, that about wraps Where's, it up, I where think. Where did Cousin Brandon go? Oh, there he is. Uh, no, I'm okay. right I was going to say, I've been reading this, by the way, Beast of Burden. Oh, we've read that, yes. G.I. Jolie's yeah. also read that. We really like that. It's a, it's a really great, especially with uh, Halloween coming. It's uh, it's a fun read. I've really been enjoying that. Hmm. But. For sure. Uh, yeah, well, hey, Cousin Brandon, we'd, lo- we'd like to thank you for joining us. It's been a great episode. Hope you had fun. No, thanks, thanks for having me. I, like I said, I feel like a jackass. I mean, I, I don't know enough about comics anymore to really weigh in. But at the same time, you guys are wonderful. Like, what a, what a sweet bunch of people you are. And I mean that, like, legitimately. Like, you're, you're a very nice group of people. So thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. And we'd love to have you on again if you're interested. We'll try yeah. to pick a better batch of comics. Maybe we'll have you on when Todd McFarlane starts. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would love that. Or or at the same time, have me on with more terrible comics. Because at the, okay. I, 
I, I'm a negative person. I would. So like we'll see you next week. Yeah. There you go. That's fine. That's fine. No, seriously, that, I, I very much uh, appreciate it. It's been very fun. And you know what? Uh, when I move to Canada, let's all hang out. How about that? Yeah, absolutely for sure. And hopefully, you can come to one of our upcoming comic conventions. That'd be great. Oh, uh, I would love it. I would love it. Awesome. I'll okay, so you friends. Yeah, there what? you go. All of us good. Because the three of the three of mine that are that are alive are here. So <laughs> I, I'm a total recluse at this point. So like, whatever. I'll come to Canada and be like, leave me alone. <laughs> It's like oh, I can't come out tonight. I'm washing my hair. I can't come out tonight because of COVID. So fuck that. And it's like 2025. <laughs> 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 okay, so everyone, be sure to join us next week. We're doing crossovers again. We're going to be reviewing Power Pack 29, featuring Spider-Man and the Hobgoblin. We're going to be doing Marvel Fanfare with with a backup Spider-Man story. Or sorry, a Captain America Spider-Man story. And then we're also going to be reviewing a Marvel Tales issue with a rare original story, because usually Marvel Tales is reprints. So that's going to be an interesting one, written by Sholly Fish, who's still doing comics today. So that should be cool. So be sure to join us next week. Like we said, Cousin Brandon, thank you for joining us. Bex Luthor, thanks for joining us. And Josh, you can take it from here. Yeah, we also want to thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. Uh, it really helps when you leave us a review over on Apple Podcast, or you can drop us a line on Twitter at, at HCT Spidercast. Uh, please let us know what you guys think about the comics and the podcast itself. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep that comics conversation going. So until next Monday, see you later. So wait, is this the show? Have we started? No, technically okay. no. Then, is this the show? Yeah. This is the best podcast we've ever done. This is really fun. <laughs> <laughs>